Hello. Welcome to Reflective Hour with Tammy Tony Butler. I'm your host today. We all really already know who's the host of this show and who this show is all about. It's about Jesus. It's about faith. It's about him walking us through the darkness so that we can find the light. It's about uh, reflecting back even on my own journey and how he's brought me through so many trials, so many tribulation periods, so many dark periods. He's my everything. He's my friend. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So many people have religion, but they don't have a relationship. I have a relationship with Abba Father, Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, that threefold cord. I seek him for everything. I trust him. He is the father that has never left me, never forsake me. Who's never put on me more than I can bear. And who is always with me, even in the dark. I couldn't always see him. I couldn't reach out to him. But he was there, waiting. He's waiting for you. He wants you to call out to him, to seek him, to help you break the chains of addiction, the chains of self-sabotage, the chains of imposter syndrome, addictions, suicidality, depression, all those things, broken marriages, broken homes, broken promises. He wants you to rest on the living, breathing word of God, the truth that will never, ever abandon. You will never be lost. You will never be lonely again. You're fifthly, beautifully, and wonderfully made, daughters and sons of the King. And when you realize that and realize your place, that you do matter, that you are worthy, and you are worth bountiful blessings, you are worth peace and joy. It can all be yours. You can sleep through the night. You can sleep in the middle of the storm. I do. I sleep like a baby now. I don't need Ambien or a bottle of wine to wash it down to get to sleep. I just sleep. I live in the same world that you do, a fallen world where darkness is all around. Trials and tribulations come, negative, negative circumstances. But I reflect back on his goodness and his kindness, on how he keeps his promises to me how he sees me through even the darkest of times and he can see you through too. He had me reflecting uh, in Romans uh, nine and uh, it's even sometimes titled Paul nine. And I'm, I'm going to read Romans nine 31 through 33 in the amplified Bible. Whereas Israel pursuing the law of righteousness did not succeed in fulfilling the law. And why not? Because it was not by faith that they pursued it, but as though it were by works, relying on the merit of their works instead of their faith. They stumbled over the stumbling stone, and Jesus Christ is known as the stumbling stone. As it is written and forever remains written, behold, I am laying in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. And he who believes in him, meaning Christ, whoever adheres to trust in and relies on him will not be disappointed in his expectations. When we look at that in the King James Version, but Israel, which followed right after the law of righteousness, have not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Then there's a 
Tree of Life version. And I'm not sure why he wanted me to read all three versions, but I just obey. But Israel, who pursued a Torah of righteousness, did not reach the Torah. Why? Because they pursued it not by faith, but as if it were from works. They stumbled over the stone of stumbling, just as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion, a stone of stumbling and rock of offense, and whoever believes in him shall not be put to shame. The hardest part of my life was learning to sit still, to be idle. Father kept calling me to trust, to surrender, to obey. But I often rebelled and would get lost in a task. I believed that by working on things he loved, then I was serving him. I finally realized that it's about relationship with Christ and serving him with our entire heart and being, putting his will first in our lives instead of our own. These passages teach us that we cannot earn our way to heaven. Volunteering at church is not enough. A changed heart, which Christ seeks, a surrender, obedient heart, follows Christ, longs for Christ, seeks Christ. We are placed on earth to fulfill a kingdom purpose. God's plan, God's way, not ours. We have no control over anything, yet we try to control everything. Instead, we must put Christ first in our lives, build a relationship with him, surrender to his will in steadfast obedience, and let him lead us. We are merely soldiers in a spiritual war, and we must follow our commander, Christ. Would you rebel against your chain of command? Of course not. Or you could put many in harm's way who are entrusted in your care, on your watch. The same is true with faith. You must walk by faith and not by sight. Trust God. Lean not on your own understanding and walk in total surrender and submission. And that's what I just relate in my own life, in my, my own uh, journey. I often, I often just try to control everything again, as I said earlier. And I, I couldn't ever sit still. I thought if I threw myself into being a wounded healer in the emergency room, and I just worked myself to death, thinking, well, so many people even said, well, you're a nurse and you, you got a, a, a ticket to heaven. You don't even have to worry. But I would go to work as a nurse, but I would come home and live a life of sin, separated from Christ, from the Holy Spirit. I didn't have a relationship with it. I felt too dirty to even call out to him. I didn't even know the words. And he set me free of all that, the shame, the guilt, the fear, the, the self-loathing, the self-sabotage. Um, after, uh, you know, my childhood uh, sexual assaults, my uh, rapes, and uh, later learning, you know, that that was human trafficking, actually. He set me free of all that. Losing my father to suicide uh, when I was a teenager. I lost him before that to Vietnam. But it's not service. It's not works. It's not volunteering for that nonprofit. It's not volunteering on the security team. It's what has God asked you to do? Do you wake up every morning and put him first? Do you ask him? Do you get alone with him in a closet somewhere or in a personal private space and say, Abba, Father, Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, how do I serve you today? Not my will, but yours. He wants an obedient heart. He wants a relationship. He grieves because his children don't even see him. They rebel against him. That spirit of rebellion is all over this world. It's everywhere. That's not what he wants. He wants his children to see him, to long for him. And I tell you, when you do, and the Holy Spirit fills you up, and he takes away the weight of it all, the icky, the trauma, the, the heaviness, 
what you can't describe, but it just consumes you, the negative. When he takes it and lifts it off of you and you have a moment of peace and hope and joy like I have, and I'm still living in it every day, so grateful. When he lifts all of that off of you, I gave him my life and I walk in blind obedience to him. Whatever he asks me to do, wherever he sends me, and the greatest tool I have in my tool chest to carry me through these dark times that we are facing as a nation and as a world is to tether so tightly into that vine, into Christ. And that's what you have to do. And he is the only thing that set me free of it all, the weight of it all. And he's ready and he's willing to set you free. And evidence of that is a changed life truly living in, in, in surrender. And when you put him first, everything else comes, everything else. But you just have to put him first and realize it's not about you. It's not about your our egos, our pride, self-promotion, none of those things. It's about the kingdom of God and what is going on now, how we serve him, how we get through these troubling times how we draw from his well of mercy, his living water of mercy. I sinned. I hurt people. I'm not worthy to even be having uh, this podcast, this YouTube channel, these things that he's doing and giving me, these platforms he places me on. I'm not worthy. He, his mercy saw me through. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. We have to really rely on his mercy and understand that if we do not repent, turn back to him, rebuke the spirit of rebellion, follow our father in true obedience, that faith without works is dead and you cannot serve your way to heaven. You have to have a relationship with him. You have to say, Abba, Father, what is it that you want me to do? Help me, Jesus, to serve so that he never turns and says, I never knew you. I didn't know who you were. You served in the church, but did I ever know you? Did I ever truly have your heart? Did you ever seek me just once and ask me what I wanted you to do for the kingdom of God that day? Did you surrender your control or did you make yourself a God of your life? in charge of everything. Because if you control everything, no one can ever hurt you. But what you realize is we never have control. We can't control anything. It's much better to live a surrendered life, waiting on the whisper of direction, of love, of peace, of his protection, his mighty wing of protection, than to live without it. Seek Christ. Seek his love. Reach out to him. I did, and I've never been the same. He's waiting. Oh, Holy Spirit, go with them. Give them your peace that surpasses all understanding. Help them to sleep through their storms, to get through this day. When they look at the storms of their finances, the storms of their relationships, everything going on in life, let them just see you and let that peace overtake them envelop them like a warm blanket so that they can rest in and it'll carry them through. Don't worry about tomorrow. It has enough trouble with its own. Just get through. I bless you. And it's loving. Grace.